Could you please say your name, spelling your last for the record? Good morning. My name is Dr. Emerson Couples. Couples is C O U P L E S. What do you do for a living, Dr. Couples? Well, I'm a professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Iowa. And working in this department has allowed me to focus much of my teachings and research on child psycho psychology, particularly disruptive behavior disorders, such as psychopathy. What sort of ex uh, education do you have in your field? Well, I have my bachelor's, master's, and PhD on psychology from the University of Illinois. What sort of edu experience do you have in the field of psychology? Well, between earning my master's and PhD, I completed a one-year internship with the Children's Hospital Medical Center in Washington, D.C. And following the completion of my PhD, I worked for the Center for Families and Children in the Department of Psychology in New York. <coughs> what sort of qualifications do you have in your field? Well, I'm licensed to practice in Illinois and Midlands. I serve on the board of the American Psychological Association. And in 2012, I received the Professor of the Year Award at the University of Iowa. Dr. Couples, how are you involved in today's case? Well, I was hired to examine Jesse Duran and to determine if Jesse had any pre existing mental conditions that could explain why she would deliberately point a loaded firearm at Sydney Park on August 18th of 2010. Dr. Couples, when you were coming to your conclusions, do you have did you have sufficient facts and data? I did, yes. What facts and data were you relied did you rely upon? I relied upon the affidavits of Danny Brooks, who was the park's babysitter. Terry Chapin, who was one of the park's neighbors, Andy Park, who was Sydney's mother, as well as Hayden Duran, who was Jesse's mother. Now, I also reviewed a copy of Jesse's deposition, and I have familiar several exhibits. Were these the only facts and data that you relied upon? No, I also relied upon 20 interviews I've conducted, three of which were with Jesse's former babysitters, six were with former teachers, and the remaining 11 were with fellow classmates and playmates of Jesse Duran. Did you use reliable principles and methods? Yes, I did. Were these principles and methods applied reliably to the facts and data of today's case? Yes, they were. Dr. Couples, what is psychopathy? Psychopathy is a mental condition which causes people who suffer from psychopathy to have a complete lack of emotion or concern for others. Now, they are capable of displaying behavior that normal people would find quite horrifying or baffling. Well, how so, doctor? Well, this means that people with psychopathy have been known to lie convincingly and to do so for a trivial gain. They are capable, uh, capable of denying having done something in an entirely convincing manner. Now, this can go as far as killing someone without hesitation and later deny having done so. What test did you use in order to diagnose Jesse? I used what is known as the PI-J test, which stands for the Psychopathy Assessment Instrument for Juveniles. And how do you score someone using the PI-J test? <coughs> well, the test will rate an individual across 10 different traits and assigns a score of 2, 1, or 0 for a combined total range of 0 to 20. What does each score represent? A score of 2 indicates that the trait clearly applies. A score of 1 indicates that the trait is somewhat or sometimes applicable, and a score of 0 indicates that the trait is never applicable. And what were the different traits that you tested Jesse on? Well, there were 10 different traits for which I tested Jesse. Those were gratuitous and or guiltless lying, persistent aggression, defiance of authority figures, unresponsiveness to reprimands or threats of punishment, vandalism, petty theft, cruelty to animals, indifference to the pain of others, cutting class or breaking curfew, and early sexual experimentation. So of these 10 traits, which were the ones that Jesse Duran exhibited? Jesse Duran exhibited the first eight traits that I listed. And of those eight traits, which were the ones that were most obvious to you? The three key traits that were most prominent in Jesse's behavior was defiance of authority figures, persistent aggression, and um, gratuitous and or guiltless lying. Well, Dr. Couples, what evidence did you find to suggest guiltless or gratuitous lying? Well, for one, every person with whom I spoke and had any long-term relationship with Jesse Duran was able to define scenarios in which Jesse was found being untruthful. What did they tell you? Well, for example, one of Jesse's prior teachers explained a scenario in which Jesse falsely, insistently, and convincingly claimed that Hayden Durant, who has always worked in IT at the hospital, was actually a retired police officer. What, did, what evidence did you find to suggest defines of authority figures in Jesse Durant? Well, two of the former babysitters, as well as four former teachers, were able to recount weaker, more long periods in which Jesse would 
scream or throw a fit anytime she was asked to perform a simple, ordinary task. Now, in my review of Andy's statement, Andy also explains a situation in which she had to take away one of Jesse's violent video games, and Jesse responded by becoming very angry and throwing a fit. Lastly, Doctor, I want to talk about the last uh, trait that you mentioned, the persistent aggression. What evidence did you find to suggest that? Well, once again, through the research I conducted as well as the interviews, people were able to define Jesse as being seen as attempting to bite, punch, push other children. Now, there was also a disciplinary note that was sent home by Jesse's school, as well as a picture that was drawn by Jesse that corroborated with persistent aggression. Well, if I were to show you a copy of that disciplinary note, would you recognize it in court today? Yes, I believe I would. I'm approaching the opposing counsel with plaintiff's one. I'm approaching the witness with the same. What did I just hand you, Dr. Couples? Uh, this was the notification of student discipline that was sent home by Jesse's school. Does it appear to be a fair and accurate copy of this disciplinary note? It does, yes. Does it appear to have been altered in any way? Uh, no, it has not. How do you know that this is, in fact, a disciplinary note sent home from Jesse's school? Uh, well, in my review of Hayden's statement, uh, Hayden acknowledges of knowing about this disciplinary note, and her signature is also located at the bottom. This time, plaintiff moves to admit plaintiff's one into evidence. Any objection, defense? Yes, Your Honor. This document contains hearsay. Um, it's a document made by the school, and it's statements made by the school on, in terms of what Jesse's actions were, and therefore is an out-of-court statement. May I respond now? Yes, you may, Mr. Camacho. Uh, according to Rule 703, expert witnesses are allowed to uh, rely upon otherwise inadmissible evidence to come to their conclusions as this goes directly towards Dr. Couples' conclusion of determining whether or not Jesse Duran was a psychopath, this is admissible. May I respond? Mrs. Yes. While this expert can use evidence to um, create their conclusion, they cannot bring this into court as it is still hearsay. These are statements made by the school, and there's no, um, no way to know like what exactly statements were. Therefore, they were out-of-court statements to prove the truth of the matter, sir. Well, uh, you reply? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, once again, we're not going to actually delve into the statements themselves. We're going to just use this uh, document to determine what Dr. Couples was able to determine. Once again, under Rule 703, she's allowed to come to her conclusions on otherwise inadmissible evidence. Okay, I'm ready to rule. My understanding of the um, rules of evidence is to uh, expert witnesses, they can rely on pretty much anything. And, uh, it's your obligation and your, uh, your right to uh, cross-examine her as to the basis of those um, her conclusions and whether those conclusions are, in fact, uh, supported by the evidence that she, she um, considered. So you'll have plenty of time to cross-examine this witness. This so Mr. Camacho, would you please proceed? Your objection is overruled. So the uh, document is in evidence. The disciplinary note? Would be moved into evidence. You're moving to move that into evidence? Yes. Um, you, is your objection to having the document admitted into evidence or having your comment on the evidence? To be admitted into evidence. I'm going to deny that motion. It's not going to be admitted into evidence, but she can certainly testify as to that's the basis of the conclusion. Yes, sir. Dr. Couples, what were you able to learn from this disciplinary note? Well, I was able to learn that uh, Jesse Duran had shown violence to, towards other students multiple times within the same school year. Uh, and this disciplinary note explains that this was the third reprimand that Jesse was receiving. Well, Dr. Couples, you also mentioned a picture drawn by Jesse Duran. Would you recognize that in court if I showed it to you? Yes. I'm approaching opposing counsel with plaintiffs, too. <coughs> I'm approaching the witness with the same. Does this appear, what did I just hand you, doctor? Uh, this was the picture that was drawn by Jesse Duran. Does this appear to be a fair and accurate copy of the picture drawn by Jesse Duran? It does, yes. How do you know this was in fact drawn by Jesse Duran? Well, not only is Jesse's name labeled as top as Jesse D, but also in my review of Hayden's statement, uh, she acknowledges that knowing that this picture was drawn by Jesse as she recognizes Jesse's handwriting. 
this time plaintiff would like to admit plaintiffs two into evidence. Do you have objection? No, Your Honor. Be admitted. Dr. Couples, what can you tell us about this picture? Well, this picture depicts Jesse in several different scenarios holding a weapon. She is pointing at objects, at animals, but also at other children. Now, between all the evidence I reviewed and the interviews, this all clearly conforms with persistent aggression. Now, Doctor, after reviewing the evidence, well, how did Jesse Duran score on your Pi J test? Jesse's final score was a 12. And with a score of 12, what does that mean? Uh, Jesse's score of 12 led me to conclude that Jesse suffers from psychopathy. Well, what does that mean for today's case? Uh, this has two bearings for today's case. Uh, the first is that it is entirely possible that Jesse Duran could have intentionally harmed Sydney Park on Objection, Your Honor. Improper character evidence, if I may be heard. Yes, you did. Well, this witness can use um, characteristics of Jesse and Jesse's prior behaviors to make her conclusion for today's case. She cannot use her conclusion to characterize actions of Jesse on August 18th. Response, please. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Um, if directing you to case law, Longstreet v. Floyd, when expert testimony about a psychological disorder, even those that bear directly on the matter at hand, is not character evidence under Rule 404 or 404B. Therefore, this would be admissible. Ms. Dolia? Um, I just would go back under improper character evidence that, again, this conclusion cannot be applied to say that Jesse is more likely to act in any way and therefore this is a characterization and that does validate as improper. Final word. Uh, once again, Your Honor, just directing you back to the relevant case law that has already been previously ruled upon, uh, this would not be character evidence as it goes directly towards the expert testimony about a psychological disorder on Jesse Durant. All right, I'm going to over your objection. Yes, sir. I'll ask the question again. What was, what was your first conclusion in today's case? The first was that Jesse Duran would, would have been capable of intentionally harming Sydney Park on August 18th of 2010. And your second conclusion, Doctor? Well, one of the distinguishing factors of psychopathy is the subject's ability to hide their empathy and also their self-centeredness. With this being said, statements made by a person who has been diagnosed with psychopathy, therefore, shouldn't be taken at face value or assumed to be true. Thank you. No further questions. Permission to retrieve the evidence and tender plaintiffs to, uh, to the bench? Very good. Thank you, Mr.